What's up guys? Welcome to Newswave. Now there's some really good stuff to talk about today that I'm pretty excited about. I just want to let you guys know though in advance, I will be streaming the Call of Duty announcement later on today around 1 o'clock Eastern. Stop by a little early. I'll probably start streaming around 1245. If there's anything you want to talk about today, more than welcome to stop by the subreddit as well. It's reddit.com slash r slash spawnwave. And with that guys, let's get started. And the first bit of news comes from Sonic Forces, the Sonic game that we we're waiting for. We already know about Sonic Mania. I've played it much like most people have went to the events, got to play it, which Sonic Mania is much more like a true to form Sonic game. One you'd expect to be able to play uh, back in the 16-bit era, just much more colorful, much more fluid. It looks great. But Sonic Forces has been kind of, I think it's been interesting to a lot of Sonic fans because it looks like it's going to try to capitalize on maybe what Sonic Generations did where that shift from 2D to 3D was going to be in play. And we actually got some new gameplay footage for Sonic Forces, which confused me even more because it looked like Sonic to me, but for some reason the fan base seems very divided over it right now. So here's some of the footage you're going to see here, and it looks like they're running through Green Hill Zone. Now a lot of people are having some problems with this. Again, mostly the, the, the Sonic fan base is kind of interesting. They seem very divided here. Some of them like this. They say it looks colorful. Uh, they don't like the stops in momentum randomly where you'll kind of hit a wall and just completely stop, but that's kind of what happened in the original Sonics occasionally. Now, one of the other things they don't like is that there are random springs that are kind of hidden, which I can agree with because it almost looks like he hits it and then just stops and loses momentum. The whole point of Sonic is to be able to string together a really nice run going through a level if you're very good at it and you just never really stop. You just keep going, like fast, obviously, at Sonic. <laughs> but a lot of people are having these mixed results on things like visuals. Some people don't like the visuals, some do, the music. And I just think at this point, Sega is really going to struggle making the Sonic fan base happy as a whole. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I have a feeling that's why Sonic Mania is coming out for the people who really enjoy the old school 2D Sonic. And then we have Sonic Forces, which is going to be more of like an experimentation going forward, them trying new things. And realistically, if you're a company like them, they, Sonic seems to be a struggle to get into current times. And I can understand why they're going to try these new things. I just think that the Sonic fan base really needs to understand what's going on here. And if you want to do the classic 2D style Sonic, they don't have these faux 3D and weird visuals. Sonic Mania is coming out. I think that's for you. If you're enjoying more of the 3D Sonic, you want something that look, looks a little more futuristic, I guess, as Sonic Forces is probably for you. Or maybe you want both. Either way, though, I would let this play out a little further. There's a good chance that some of the footage that we saw where he did some weird stuff, like hit the air and he was just kind of running and it was really weird animation. There's a chance that some of this stuff is like alpha footage or, or, or beta footage, stuff that's not refined all the way. And they just wanted to give us a glimpse at what they think Sonic Force is going to look down the road. So I would wait for more gameplay. I assume we'll see some more at E3, maybe a much more fleshed out version that kind of shows us that 2D to 3D look that they're going for. So I would take a look at this, enjoy it, and just get ready for E3 when I'm sure we'll see a whole swarm of video for it. And our next bit of news comes from Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. That came out yesterday, and a lot of people thought it was good, I guess. I mean, it's a, kind of a shooter. It's not super different from anything else we're seeing, and the review scores kind of reflect that right now. But one of the things that was really interesting about it is its take its load time. And the load time is pretty long. It's about five minutes on the PS4, for example. And a lot of that, I believe, is due to them loading a ton of stuff into memory, because after that, it doesn't really need to load as much. Fast travels like 14 to 15 seconds, for example. Restart emissions, 25 seconds. But still, five minutes to get into the game is a long time. I mean, that's not a little bit of time when you're trying to play the game initially. I mean, that seems like something you'd have to really set some time aside for and be like, well, it's going to take a while to do this. Maybe I should turn it on like an, old, like an old computer you would do where you turn the computer on, walk upstairs, come back downstairs. It's kind of like that. And, and you know what? They at least responded to us and let us know that that's pretty much the case. You load in for a while at first. They don't have to load as much later on. And the next bit of news is... Uh, uh, is that right? Next bit of news apparently is Night Trap. If you don't know what Night Trap is, it's been really, it's been brought to light on the internet heavily recently, when I'm recently, a couple years ago, with the Angry Video Game Nerd who did this, where it is a full motion video style game on the Sega CD, and it was very odd. It pushed a lot of boundaries at the time. You essentially played as somebody trying to, almost like a security guard, trying to keep burglars who are later <laughs> revealed to be like, vampire type offenders who were in there to, to suck the women's blood and capture them. I feel like they did that, at least gave them that kind of backstory so they weren't uh, 
I guess, burglars breaking in to kidnap women. They were just there to suck their blood, so it was okay. <laughs> but I, overall, it was kind of a it was kind of a cult classic. It's turned into that where people would buy it to play it because it was so bad. It really wasn't the best game, but it had some interesting ideas. I'll at least give them that. They used the Sega Genesis probably to its max, considering they were jumping around to different channels where all kinds of stuff was happening. And the idea was to capture these guys without the women knowing that this was happening. You would do things like have a false ramp, like a ramp pop in where the stairs are, and they would zip down into the cellar and stuff like that. What well, looks like it's making a comeback, strangely, for its 25th anniversary. And this is happening this spring. It's going to be on the PS4 and the Xbox One, and Limited Run Games is even getting in on the action. They're doing a limited run of physical copies, which is really cool, for the, from what I can tell, for the PS4. And it's going to kind of uh, show the 32X type colors or the regular Sega CE colors. And what a cool idea for them to do that, to jump in and, and really put a game out there that collectors can enjoy. Limited run games, it's exactly what they sound like. The, the runs that they do for physical copies are very limited. You kind of have to have your alerts on. So if you want this, go to their site and get signed up for alerts. They'll alert you when it's ready to go. You can get on there and you can try to buy before they sell out because when they sell out, they don't really do it again unless they announce a second run, which most times they don't. Of course, though, if you don't care about the physical copy, you can just download it when it's available. Not a big deal on the PS4 or the Xbox One. What an interesting idea though, right? I mean. It, I guess that's this is mostly going to be geared towards people who I, I have a nostalgia bone. Maybe you enjoyed the AVGN uh, video he did on it or what others have done on it at this point. Several people, actually. And you just want to get the game and try it out without trying to hunt down a Sega CD, a Genesis, and the game online. You just don't want to do all that. I'm sure it's going to come out at a very affordable rate. They haven't said from like tell pricing. And we talked a little bit about Bomberman and how it was all of a sudden jumped to 60 frames per second out of nowhere. And this was just done in, in the patch 1.3 that Konami had released. And Overall, Digital Foundry checked this out just to kind of check facts, and yeah, it runs at 60 frames, but there are some kind of some compromises that had to be made to get it there. Now, the easiest compromise you can go with when you're trying to get frame rate to a certain point is resolution, and that's what they did here. Now, when docked, they dropped it to 720p in certain modes to get that 60 frames per second, and they get it. I mean, with battle mode, that's what happens. It drops to 720, you get 60 frames, everything is good. Now, when you undock it, it goes to 540p, so it does drop resolution there. Still 60 frames, though. Now, when you do the single player, which is like the story mode, jumps back up to 1080p and seems to be uncapped frame rate wise, so it sits right around 45 frames. Not bad. There might be some stuff going on that we don't know about in, I guess, the single player. There could be like AI and stuff happening that may be uh, keeping it from, I guess, pushing those frames like it does in battle mode, whereas battle mode is a very confined uh, area. There's no like extensions of the map and a bunch of enemies. There's mostly just you and a couple other people on the map. So hard to say there why that's the case, but really at this point with a game like that, especially frame rate is king. Resolution, not as big of a deal, I think, especially if it's dropped and maybe upscaled, but realistically not a big deal. I like that it's 60 frames or 45 frames at that point above 30 makes a lot of sense. So good on Konami and everyone to get that done. And it doesn't look like they're done with this game, with the characters they've announced now, and who knows what other performance patches they'll release. This next bit of news is extremely confusing because we have developers on the same team saying different things, and this comes from developers at Axiom Verge. Originally, in an interview, they said, uh, yeah, physical copies in the works for the Nintendo Switch, and then we come to find out that's not the case. And this was in an interview with the World 1-1 podcast. Tom Happ came out and said, yes, a physical copy is in the works for the Nintendo Switch. It's coming. And then later on, they completely rescind this and they end up saying 100% up to Nintendo America. It could have been a launch title if they had approved it. We need to wait for them to say it's okay. We could have had it out at launch. We've been asking them nonstop for over a year. We're looking at ways to work around Nintendo of America. Nothing certain. That sounds weird, doesn't it? They're looking at ways to work around Nintendo of America. Isn't that who you would be releasing the game for along with Nintendo of Europe and Nintendo Japan? Why would you be working around one but not the others? That seems like a very odd statement. Now, if you don't know what Axiom Verge is, it's very, very similar to Super Metroid or just regular Metroid. It's actually a really fun game. I think a lot of people in the comments of all these different forums and pages probably never played it because it's actually a really well done game. But if you just look at it, it looks like an 8-bit style basic indie game, but it's very deep. It has a lot to it. If you enjoy Metroid, go check it out on Steam because it, it can pretty much run on a potato at this point. That's a lot of fun. I have a feeling, and this is just a hunch on my part, so if you're going to give me my opinion, 
I have a feeling that Super Metroid or some kind of Metroid game is in the works right now and it possibly could be a 2D Metroid. I don't really know why Nintendo would not approve this, specifically Nintendo of America, who knows that Metroid is popular in America, not so much Japan or even Europe. It, America is Metroid's home, basically. That's where people buy it. We, we like it here in the US and it's interesting that they are protecting it. They are protecting their shop right now against like a, a game like Axiom Verge is very similar to Metroid. I have a feeling, a very good feeling now, that Metroid is going to show up in some way at E3, whether it's an announcement that shows, yes, it's coming this year and it's a 2D style Metroid, maybe it's like a 2D, 3D style. It's hard to say, but it's very odd that they would pick this game out and block the developers from releasing a game that would probably be a couple bucks on the eShop, 10, 15 maybe, and it would hit that Metroid bone that they will not give us for some reason. They will not give us that Metroid game, at least for the past couple of years that we've been begging for. Well, I have a feeling they don't want any competition at, on their eShop at all when Metroid comes out. And like I said, I really mean competition at all by games that are like it, whereas Axiom Verge is very similar to the point where it's almost hard to tell the difference at times. And the last bit of news is, uh, oh, oh boy, it's good. It's very good. So. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. We we heard about this, right? Uh, uh, the PlayStation Experience. Heard all about it. It's going to be an awesome new Marvel vs. Capcom game. Of course, they then announced Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is coming out pretty quickly as well for PS4 and then the Xbox One, which it has now. And then here comes Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. They give us a bunch of information. It's releasing in September. Great. Here's some new characters. Awesome. Here's stuff about the story, which, by the way, cool idea on their part for the story because we're going to get something that tries to actually cross the Marvel and the Capcom universes by having Sigma from Mega Man X and Ultron, obviously, merge together to make this ridiculously strong enemy that they have to come together and fight, rather than just kind of throwing you in with an arcade and be like, hey, you know, pick fighters and fight each other. It's fun. I like this idea, but we get to the end of the trailer and there was something a little interesting there. They show us the Deluxe Edition. It's a premium packaging edition that has some very cool people, and don't get me wrong, it has like all these figures. From what I can tell, I assume they all come with it, and it's not like some, like one comes with it and you gotta collect all of them or something. But it had like Mega Man X, Chun-Li, there's uh, Iron Man, Captain Marvel, and then they had like a really cool book that comes with it, and then they have the Infinity Gems that come with it that light up with LEDs. Cool idea there, I like this, I like this Deluxe Edition, honestly, if I was a bigger fighting fan. I would probably buy this. I am, I'm kind of a big Marvel fan, though, so I'm still looking at it. And, of course, you guys know I'm a, I'm a Mega Man fan, so I might get that. <laughs> but otherwise, we kind of fade in, and it says six DLC characters available. And that's interesting, isn't it? So Capcom is announcing DLC before half the, other ro half the roster is announced. So we have half the roster right now. They tell us there's six DLC characters coming. They're leaving us without other characters of the main roster. And the game's not even out yet. And this, to me, this is very, very similar to the whole Zelda DLC debacle. But for some reason, people really attacked Zelda and, and the makers of Zelda over this entire thing. And if you look at like the Zelda, like Zelda, when they announced that, you look at the comments, people are like, well, they're, they're talking about DLC before the game's even out. I mean, how can they do that? How could they take our money before the game's out for DLC? I mean, that's not right. Here's Marvel vs. Capcom in Infinite doing the same thing, but people aren't losing their minds about it? Isn't that a little weird? I think that's odd. I have no problem, honestly, because it is business. I understand the spot from either side. I don't understand this reaction, this, this, this specific reaction to Zelda, but not to Capcom. I'm trying to make sense of it. All I can assume at this point is that it's expected from Capcom because they do it all the time. And fighting fans are just like, eh, they're gonna do it, why not? But that's the first time we've seen DLC for Zelda. And I assume at that point, that's really where the backlash came from. Now, a lot of people were also assuming that for some reason Breath of the Wild was not finished. Breath of the Wild comes out, huge game, obviously worth the money. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious at this point. People are putting 200 to 300 hours into it, which is insanity for a $6 price tag. I mean, that's like Skyrim levels of, of gameplay. But here's Marvel vs. Capcom with their DLC characters coming. And we don't know how big this game's going to be, so I'm going to reserve judgment until it comes out. I think that is the smart thing to do. But it's just, it's interesting to look at, to, to see that for some reason... Fighting games like Marvel vs. Capcom and even Tekken 7 who have done this very thing, Guilty Gear has done it too, but for some reason, 
Zelda is literally burned at the stake <laughs> and these games get a pass. So I don't know, maybe you guys can let me know why that is down in the comments because I'm a little curious myself. Either way, I'm very happy about the story mode that they're doing and I do like Mega Man X's in there. I have to imagine one of the DLC characters or characters they've not shown yet or more people from X's uh, universe, Zero. There could even be some of the Mavericks that you see on there because obviously Sigma is a key part of the entire story. It's gonna be a very hard enemy for them to defeat. You see in the in the trailer, he's just smacking people around. They do, I'm with Chris Redfield. I do like, the biggest thing that I'm excited for is that they look like they have no problem having interactions between characters from either side. I mean, you have, uh, there's a quick shot at the end with X and Rocket Raccoon kind of looking at each other and interacting. So I, I'm very curious to see how they make that crossover work there, just with different characters. And that's it for News Wave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know if think about anything down in the comments that we talked about, or even over on the subreddit, let me know we think about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Wars. I like I like the entire idea of one big war against uh, like Sigma and Ultron fusing because obviously they're much stronger than everyone else. And I like the idea of trying to build a story around the characters rather than just throw you into what is essentially an arcade simulator and having you fight back and forth. I know fighting fans like that. I just enjoy a good story if they can tell it. Injustice is awesome for that. I, re I really like the story that they come up with with Injustice to bring all these people together. Let me think about Night Trap. Maybe you are going to buy it. Maybe you're excited for it. You know, I'll check it out just to see how the, the I'm sure the cutscenes will look much better, obviously, because they will definitely put them at 1080p, maybe even 4K, which realistic, what's interesting is I think the original PS4 could do 4K on that if they gave it the ability to. That might be something, to be honest, that the Xbox uh, One S may be able to do. Maybe it can do 4K with those since it's mostly video. Interesting. And let me know what you guys think about this whole Axiom Verge thing. Maybe, maybe Nintendo does have Metroid slated and ready to go at E3. That's all for now, guys. I will see you next time.